least 17, 17. But the average Muslim says this 40 times a day. Oh well, Allah, don't give us their back. But then, we follow the path. It's just like somebody tells his mom, Mom, you know, you know these neighbors of ours? They're very bad kids. Please, mom, help me stay away from them. I don't like them. I don't want to spend time with them. They're corrupting my character. They're no good. Mom, please, 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 all day, mom, help me. Right? And then, what is he doing all day? Taking outside with them. His mother calls him, hey, come, she's trying to, you know, get him out of the situation. Come, you want to help me, come? No. Told me you want me to help you? I'm helping you, man, come in. Huh, huh, mom? Huh? Are you okay, my, my son? You know, your brain, is it, everything is okay? What is this hypocrisy? What is this nonsense? You beg me at home. Please, mom, help me, help me. I'm helping you now. You have to answer with the guys. I'm giving you alternatives. You don't want them. Oh, Allah, please, Allah. You don't want the path. Oh, Allah, this is not the Mustafim. Not the path. But then we go and we do the opposite of what we say. Is this acceptable? It's not acceptable. This is the first thing. We do this maybe trying to please them. Some Muslims, by the way, one of the major reasons why Muslims imitate the non-Muslims is because they're trying to gain their love and affection and their acceptance. So some of us have this inferiority complex that we need to change what we have been taught so a non-Muslim can accept and love what we have. But Allah told us in the Quran, وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَا النَّصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعَتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعَتَ أَهْوَاءَكُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ Allah told us emphatically in the Quran nor the Jews neither the Jews nor the Christians will ever be pleased with you never never be pleased with you. When will they become pleased with you? Once you follow their millah. Not only their deen, because the deen may deal with their religious aspect. Until you follow their whole way of life. When you decide to become a Christian, or a Jew, or a Hindu, because these are applicable even if they're not mentioned, then and only then, they will become happy with you. But Allah told us to say to them, say nay, verily the guidance of Allah is the true guidance. قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ only the guidance of Allah is the true guidance. Then Allah warned who? The Prophet ﷺ. And if you were to follow their desires, after the knowledge has been sent to you, after you have received the knowledge, then really you shall have against Allah no protector and no helper. If you follow their desires, not their knowledge, not their revelation, ahwa'ahum. If you, if you follow their desires after the truth has been conveyed to you, the knowledge has come to you, then don't expect any protection from Allah or any help from Allah. They will never be pleased with us. They will never be pleased with us. So, some of the Muslims do this in spite of this previously mentioned information. Now, what are the consequences? What is the most dangerous byproduct? of us imitating to the, the kuffar. There are actually many. But I will give you two that are most severe. So we can take heed and pay attention. Number one is a verse in the Quran. Wherein Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ بِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَىٰ وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا Whoever يُشَاقِقِ now the ulama have a lot of statements and, and uh, explanations concerning uh, yushaqiq and shiq wa mashaqqa. Uh, and the term has to do with parting. Shiq is like a half to part something, to divide it. And mushaqqa means when you are on one side and that which is dealt with is on the other side. So whoever opposes the messenger contradicts him by being on the other side. Not being on the side of the Messenger of Allah. After guidance has become clear to him, and then he follows a way other than that of the believers, which were the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, and Atba'u Tabi'een, and those who follow them in goodness and righteousness until today. If someone would, would like to follow a path other than theirs, Allah gave the person the free will. 
we will let him travel upon the path he chose. No problem in the dunya. But what happens in the hereafter? وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا But we will then make him tasty hellfire and what an evil abode. The choice is ours. You want to follow the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? There it is. The Sahaba, it's readily available. Their biographies, they are within books, book covers. You find what they did, how they lived, and how we're supposed to be. It's available. We want to follow 50 Halalas and Tupac and Biggie Smalls and I don't know who's new on the scene and I don't want to know who's new on the scene. Yeah, you can choose that. No problem. No one will grab you by the neck and bring you the other direction. The most we can do is lecture, advise, beg you maybe, brother, please don't go to Jahannam with the way you're leading your life. But that's it. Allah gave each person a free will. Do what you want. Follow the way of the disbelievers. But then if you're ready for the hellfire on a day of judgment, then you must be a brave man. Very brave. But I don't think anyone is that brave. Because no one will be able to bear Jahannam. إِذَا رَأَوْهَا مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ You know, سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا if they, if they see it from a far distance, if Jahannam sees them from a far distance, they will hear its roaring, its rage. And then يَدْعُوا هُنَاكَ ثَبُورًا ثُبُورًا They will call their death destruction. The most brave man, you know, the one who was bodybuilding, you know, all day, big muscular man, you know, his rip, her clothes about to rip when he puts them on, on the, on the day of judgment, he will beg Allah to kill him. He just wants to become Ya Laytani Kuntu Turaba. Just let me be dust. I don't want to deal with this. So when we deal with the issue, we must keep in mind that we're dealing with Jahannam. Following the ways of the Jews and the Christians and the Hindus and the Buddhists and the atheists and the likes is in essence choosing the way which leads to the hellfire. And it's the, against the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I think everybody has the answer. That's the first evidence. <coughs> The second threat which we have as a consequence of imitating the disbelievers is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a hadith of Ibn Umar which is also authentic. Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. Whoever resembles, whoever imitates a group of people, he is one of them. You become one of them. So the treatment which you receive from Allah the treatment which you receive from the Muslims, the treatment you will receive in your grave, the treatment on the day of judgment, everything will be in according to those who you favored in this life. You favor them, then you will be with them, even though you may, it may not constitute disbelief where you will be eternal in the hellfire, we seek Allah's protection for all of us, but the rest of the affairs will make you among them because the hadith says, فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ not فَهُوَ مَعَهُمْ if it says, he's with them. He's from them. You're from the people, you're one of them. Not with them. Dangerous. So would one of us like to lead a life with a stamp on his back that says, I am among the disbelievers. I am one of the disbelievers. Yes, my name is Muhammad. Yes, my iqama is green. Yes, I go to the masjid. But... Everything else is not really working out for me. So unfortunately, per the Islamic teachings, I have to be labeled as someone else. I don't think any one of us would like that title <coughs> or treatment. Now, we should know that when I'm speaking about imitating the kuffar, we have guidelines. Not everything is not allowed. In fact, imitating the disbelievers falls into two major categories. That which is forbidden, 